It had to happen. I am so sorry, guys. I am... Look, I am actually sorry, but it had to happen. Vayne top lane is insanely broken right now. And in this tank meta, you know, it is so disgusting. But you know what's funny? Besides the fact that it's broken, like, you know, in the late game, we all know she's gonna destroy. There is this way of playing Vayne in the Baron lane, which you can absolutely abuse a tank with. Like, when you're against a tank, you will destroy, even if you're against a bruiser, like Fiora, like Jax, like any Darius, you will steamroll them if you play Vayne the correct way. So, I actually really don't suggest you to skip to the gameplay this time, because the build part, I have, I have a few things to talk about, which is very, very important. This is likely gonna be a pretty long build part. So, I essentially have two builds you can follow. There is a third one, but I'm not gonna talk about it. Actually, I'm quickly gonna say, it. the third one is full crit. You go for Storm Razor, Solari Charge Blade, uh, Static Shift, Phantom Dancer, and then Guardian. That's the fourth, that's the third build. I'm not gonna talk about it because this is the anti-squishy build. If you're against five squishies only, then you go for this build. But that's not gonna happen this, this patch, right? Like, that's not gonna happen. So I'm not gonna talk too much about that build. The first build I wanna talk about is the damaging build. This is the type of build that you'll normally go on vain. You start off with a Blade of the Rune King, perfect item, of course, you always want to build it in the current meta, because it chunks down enemies. For the boots, generally, you'll go for Mercury Threat, because you need the anti-CC as a vein. Then, it depends. If the enemy has a lot of magic damage, uh, you go for Wit's End. And with a lot, I mean like, for example, if they have a Katarina in mid lane that is doing very, very well, um, you already go Wits and second item. Or if they have like, you know, Nami support and an Evelyn in the jungle, you can also go for Wits and second because Nami does magic damage and Evelyn. You know what I mean? Um, you you pretty much always build Wits and even if you don't need magic resist, but it's the difference between building it second or building it third, fourth or fifth. So you do need to incorporate it because it's just such a good item on Bane. Another insanely good item is a Solari Charge Blade. You also build a Solari Charge Blade. However, make sure when you build the Solari Charge Blade that after that you build another crit item. And Solari, you want to make sure to you build it either second or third. Don't build it any later than that because it's just not... It, you want to have it fast, basically. Fourth item, Phantom Dancer is this item that I don't... I've honestly never seen anyone build a Phantom Dancer. I don't really know why. But this item is incredibly good on Vayne. You don't need damage on Vayne. But okay, you know, you need damage on Vayne, but not as much as other ADCs because Vayne does true damage. You need sustainability. Phantom Dancer gives you that shield. When you reach 35% health, you get a pretty big shield, like 590 health. That's like a fourth of your health when you're playing Vayne at level 15. And you're going to get that shield. You're going to be in a lot tankier. It's really, really nice. So having that Phantom Dancer gives you more survivability, which gives you more damage, which is the whole point of Vayne. And then last item, you want to get a Guardian Angel. Another item you can incorporate in your build, if you're actually uh, doing really well in the game, you could get a Trinity Force as like your third, fourth, or fifth item. This item actually gives you more damage and more stats, basically. It's a really good item, but it's hella expensive. It's a really expensive item. Like, if you compare it to the Phantom Dancer, for example, this item is 733 gold more expensive. So as I said, unless you're really doing well in the game, I don't recommend you to build this item. For the enchantment, um, you go for uh, Quicksilver or Stasis, but Quicksilver I genu generally recommend. Unless you're against like a Fizz or something, you know, where you really have to get a Stasis. But Quicksilver is great. Like, if you get caught, you just QSS out of it. Your ultimate already makes you invisible, so you're, you're gonna be fine, right? Um, for the runes, always Lethal Tempo. Whatever you build on Vayne, you always go Lethal Tempo. It is by far the best rune. Second rune, you go for Hunt of Vampirism. Third rune, with this build, you go for Bone Plating because you're playing in the Baron lane. You want to survive your... Well, you're going to survive it easily, but like you want to be extremely aggressive and Bone Plating allows you to be extremely aggressive because even if the enemy does catch you, they're not gonna really, really going to do a lot of damage to you because you have Bone Plating. Fourth rune, this one is important. Nimbus Cloak. Really important because you're going to have an easy time in your lane because you're playing Baron lane vein. So you go for the Nimbus Cloak. So when you flash... You're going to get an insane amount of movement speed, which allows you to walk close to the enemy and stun them into the wall. And even if you exhaust them, they're going to get slowed and you're going to get movement speed. Nimbus Cloak, absolutely mandatory to go for. Yeah, and for the, for the spells, you go for Flash and Exhaust. Now, there is another build that I want to talk, talk about, which is this crazy build. Crazy build. I, I've only played it a few times, um, but not, it's not the build that I play in this video. But let me tell you about this build. This build, you're gonna do a little bit less damage, 
but it is gonna make you so unbelievably hard to kill. It is ridiculous. You go for Blade of the Doom King, Trinity Force, Warmog. Warmog, you know, it will proc because Trinity Force gives you 250 health. Then you go for the Amaran Twin Guard. And then as your last item, you go for a Wit's Ant. Or any... But Wit's Ant is gonna be the best. Because as I told you, you pretty much always build Wit's Ant on Vayne. Now, this build is ridiculous. Like, you're gonna be so tanky. Sure, you're gonna do less damage. But this build is gonna be really good if the enemies have a lot of tanks. Because you're still gonna do the true damage, and you're gonna stack up the lethal tempo, and you have a Blade of the Rune King, which is the most important item to chunk down tanks, but you are gonna be unkillable. Like, you're gonna be absolutely unkillable with this build. It's, it's, it's a crazy build to go for. With this build, you also go lethal tempo, also on the vampirism, but you go for conditioning. You go for conditioning because you wanna have that late game tankiness, and you go for sweet tooth because you don't have bone plating, so you need sweet tooth to compensate for that. So that is it about the builds, guys. Let's now get... Oh, the gameplay is gone. I need to make sure I find the right one now. I believe it was this game. Let me see. Yep, there it is. So let me scroll up to the gameplay real quick. It should be very soon. Put the screen correctly. I don't really know why, th why this happens. But yeah, let's go to the gameplay. There we go. So yeah, let's get into the gameplay. Now we finally got into the gameplay. By the way, I want to remind you guys, I am doing a skin giveaway. It's going to end very soon in like two days. All you have to do is put down a comment under the video and under other videos in this month to increase your chances so i honestly honestly i feel disgusting making this video i'm gonna be honest with you guys but i really felt like i had to do it because it is like you know we can try to ignore that vein is broken in the top lane right now we can try to ignore it so not many people are gonna play it but i'm gonna make the video you know what's funny guys <laughs> you know what's funny i'm gonna let you guys know something funny you know how youtube changed it where you now cannot see how many dislikes a video gets anymore Look at how hard I'm bullying it, by the way. Uh, I can, of course, still see how many dislikes my videos get. My normal videos have a ratio of around, like, 98 or 99 or, like, close to 100% like ratio, you know? Like, not that many people dislike my videos. But when I look at my top lane vein videos in the past, they have a ratio of, like, 90%. So, like, for example, the video would have a 1,000 likes and it would have 100 dislikes. 100 that's like crazy number that's unheard of i should be dead here by the way i could flash to him and nimbus cloak look nimbus cloak got me the kill you see this is why you go nimbus cloak because you don't need sweet tooth nimbus cloak is gonna get you those skills that you wouldn't have gotten here otherwise without the nimbus cloak so i really suggest you to play vein top lane with a nimbus cloak to add that other other salt of annoyance to the enemy right so um i want to clarify though Playing Vayne top is not as easy as I'm making it look. Like, you actually have to be good at this champion. Oh, my camera is... I think it's fine now. Yeah, look at this, by. Look at my hands. This is from weightlifting. You'll get these bruises on your hand. You see? Like, it, it, it will turn yellow. But you're not a man if you don't have bruises, uh, bruises on your hand. That's what my mom likes to say. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. But, um... Yeah. What was I talking about? Okay. Yeah. You don't really want to pick Vayne top lane if you're against another ranged top laner, like Cannon or like, you know, like Lucian or something. You're generally not going to do too well against them. Vayne top lane only really works against tanks. And look at how I'm playing. I told you guys that like there is this way you have to play Vayne top lane, which is basically you have to bully the enemy. Now, how do I bully the enemy? Either by hard shoving the wave, for example, like I can hard shove and bully him under his turret. Or look at what I'm doing here. Look at how what I'm doing here. I'm maintaining a distance. And I'm constantly proking my true damage on him. I should put a ward down. Boom. Boom. And he's dead. Even if my Jarvan didn't show up, I would have killed him. So, like, you see how I'm... I, like, did... I bullied him in a different way now. I didn't shove the wave. I froze the wave. And I'm going back, maintaining the freeze. Look. I'm not unfreezing the wave. This is all important. All these things are important to understand. Because when you freeze the lane... Urgot is forced to step up. He's forced to overextend. When he overextends, you have two choices. You have three choices. First choice, bully him once with your first ability. This is the general way of bullying with Vayne. You use your third ability to roll close to the enemy and you bully him once. Just boom, like one hit. Then there is the second way of bullying, which is a bit more bullying. Um, this is, you know, if you really hate the enemy and you really want to bully the enemy. This is hitting three attacks on the enemy. The way you do this type of bullying is you use your second ability and you, you basic attack the enemy. 
first ability, another basic attack, and another basic attack. You proc the true damage and you go out. Now the third way of bullying. This is the all-in type of bullying. Look, this is the second way of bullying. You see, I, I hit him a few times. Actually, do I really go? Yeah, I, this is the all-in. Never mind. I thought it would be the second one, but I'm actually going on. I need to... I dodged this ultimate. I saw it coming. I saw his ultimate coming and I dodged it. He would have killed me if I didn't dodge that ultimate. But of course, being the player I am, I saw his ultimate. You can actually see when Urgot ults. It's not easy, but you can see it. Uh, so I rolled out of it immediately. I, I had my finger ready on my first ability. And I rolled on it. But yes, the second way, as I told you, is the hitting the enemy three times. And then the third way is the all-in way. What I did right here. I've already killed the Urgot three times. Ooh. Okay, so Kha'Zix is here. How do you fight this Kha'Zix? You have two choices. You run away. Or you stay close to a minion and fight him. Right now, I didn't want to fight him. Because I don't have a finished item. And I don't have mana. So I actually chose to run away. But sometimes, I see so many people trying to flee from a Kha'Zix while they can easily win the fight. I want you guys to understand that Kha'Zix is like nothing if you're not isolated. He is absolutely nothing if you're not isolated. All of Kha'Zix's damage, like literally like 70% of his damage comes from hitting an isolated target. Now, if you can withstand the 30% of his damage, fight him. Just make sure you're close to a minion. Or in a team fight close to an ally. Ooh, this is risky. This is risky, but because my team is here, I can do it. Yep. So, like, right there, I thought about fighting the Kha'Zix earlier, but I just didn't do it because I didn't have any mana. So, it was not really worth it. Also, you have an exhaust. So, like, Kha'Zix should not be a problem for me. As long as I'm not isolated, Kha'Zix is never going to be a problem for me when he ganks me. He shouldn't be. He really shouldn't be. As long as I just, you know, don't get caught under that turret or something. Now I'm gonna try to push, you know, get some get some gold out of the turret. Vayne is decently good at pushing, by the way. You can use your first ability against a wall to push it faster. Oh, they stole our dragon. We stole their herald, they stole our dragon. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna bully him here as well. Look, now I've shoved the wave. And I'm just basic attacking him under the turret. Yeah, you see, now I shifted my strategy. I am instead shoving the wave under the turret now. And I'm gonna bully him while he's under the turret. This is a different strategy. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Look, he actually screwed up. And I hit him one more time. Boom. That's another three hits. You see? It's those three hits, the true damage that really hurts the enemy. Or I should say that the true damage that truly hurts the enemy. See that? I'm even making jokes for you guys right here. Not only entertainment, this is just, this is, this is jokes as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. He should, if, if he doesn't go back now, I should be able to kill him. Oh, he's going back over there? He's going back in that bush? Come on, catch him. No, why did I not go for him? I mean, probably, ah, oh, wait, why did I not go for him? I could have, you know what? I probably thought it was not worth my flash because he really wasn't worth any gold anymore. So I was like, you know, I can flash to the bush. I can put a ward in it and kill him. Maybe he wouldn't be there and I would have just wasted my flesh or nothing. But even for the kill, like, I was not that greedy for the kill. Because I knew he's, he's kind of useless anyways. I don't know, but I, th I still think it would have been good to kill him, though. Oh, that should be a turret. Turret, and if he comes close, I kill him too. But it seems like he's not dumb enough to actually come close. Interesting. Oh, he's, he's on the top lane. I could choose to push mid lane here. I could choose to push bot lane here. Or I could choose to take that jungle. These are three good choices. Okay, I'm going for a jungle. So, the, I, I really like this particular choice because I'm taking away their blue buff, which is going to make me much stronger, give me gold and everything. And it's going to, you know, take away the blue buff from the Kha'Zix. I'm probably also going to take the scuttle crap. Yet again, I'm just taking away jungle from the enemy Kha'Zix right here. Like, I could have shoved bot lane again. I could have shoved mid lane, but Vex shoved mid lane. And, you know, shoving bot lane, sure, it will be nice. But, like, I care more about denying gold from their jungler than the Urgot. Because I've already demolished the Urgot. Boom, stun him. I could ult here. I shouldn't get tornadoed here. If he tornadoes me, I'm dead. He has a tornado. And of course, I dodged the tornado. And he's dead now. Yep. I had to dodge that tornado. Like, if I don't dodge the tornado, I'm dead. And yet again, Nimbus Cloak helps with that. Because it gives me bonus movement speed after I'm flashing. So it will be very easy to dodge the tornado. Like, you saw it was very easy to dodge that one tornado right there. Alistar... By the way, Vayne of... Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, okay. 
So like there, I died. Even though I wasn't isolated, I died because of course I got caught by the Kha'Zix. I could have killed Alistar in a 2v1, but Kha'Zix was a little bit too much. I calculated it exactly for a 2v1 and it would have worked, but no, a, a little bit more damage and it wouldn't work anymore. So Kha'Zix just came in and killed me for free. I got a Solari Charge Blade. Am I going Guardian Angel, really? You know what? It kind of makes sense. Because the enemies are full AD, yes. Yeah, they're full AD. So actually, Guardian Angel third item does make sense. It definitely does make sense. And if you're asking, by the way, Hells, they're full AD. Why did you go Mercury Threads and not uh, Armor Boots? Look at their composition. They have an Ash. You never ever go for anything other than Mercury Threads if you're against an Ash. As a Vein. I'm talking only as a Vein right now. Um, never. Like, you always will need a Mercury, Mercury Threads because otherwise Vein or Ash will ult you in the late game. And you will get stunned for three and a half seconds. Now, you can be as fat as you want, but you're gonna die if you get stunned for three and a half seconds. Alistar ulted, by the way, but of course it doesn't matter because I'm Vayne. Oh, I'm, I need to be careful. Boom, come on. Come on. No, no. I hit that minion once there. If I if I hit him instead of the minion, I'm pretty sure I would have killed him. Oh, how did I hit the minion right there? That's so dumb. Actually, so stupid of me. Oh, he's gonna ult him, yep. Oof. Oh, ooh, okay. Oh, I remember this game, actually. I played this game like two weeks ago. The Kha'Zix was such a massive problem this game. I remember. Yes, I remember now. I completely remember this game. This Ka I, I don't know if we won, but I know that this Kha'Zix went like 15 on 0, and late game, he was just an absolute menace to deal with. Oh, now I remember why I, why I used this video for content. It's really rewarding when I actually... You know, when I actually... Oh, there we go, there we go. Look, look, this is what I mean. And all the duration was with the Mercury Threads. Can you imagine what would have happened if I didn't have Mercury Threads? But yeah, what I was gonna say is it's really rewarding that I'm not that I'm taking a lot of time to make my videos. Like I'm playing lots and lots of games to get you guys the really entertaining games. Like, you know, good enemy and good team. Uh, you're gonna get a better end product with it. It costs me more time. You know, I'm gonna make less money because of it, because obviously, you know, it's much easier to just to just upload stupid games and upload every day. Maybe even, I could even upload like two videos a day, right? Like I'll make a lot more money with it. But my philosophy is always bring out the breast product. Satisfaction of the client or the viewers in this situation is more important than revenue to me. And um, this is for two reasons. This is for reasons that I actually want to do something good for the world. But it's of course also for selfish reasons. Because it has more long, long, longevity, longevity. So like, let me give you an example. And this is maybe some advice from me coming to you guys. You know, who am I to give you advice? But I'm still going to do it. Um, if you make a product for the market, or if you have a service, or if you have make videos, anything, anything. I would always say that you should overcompensate. Unless there is no potential to grow. Like if you're doing a minimum wage job, for example. And you know, you know there is no potential to grow. Then obviously you do the bare minimum and nothing else, you know. But, you know, when you make YouTube videos like me, you have choices. You can either try to go for like as much revenue as you can. And there is nothing wrong with that, right? Because everyone has to make their living. Or you can decide to like, okay, you know what? This is probably not efficient. It's probably not efficient, you know, to take 20 hours to make one video, you know. But viewers are really going to appreciate that video. And viewers are actually going to improve from it. So you are doing something good for the world. And also for self selfish reasons, as I said. Um, um, viewers are gonna be like, hey, you know, they're, they're gonna realize it, right? Like, you may not, you may not think people are gonna realize that you put in the extra effort, but people do realize it. Like, I would say, um, what can I, what, what kind of comparison can I give to you guys? For example, let me give you a random example. Let's say you're buying, you're, you're buying new coffee beans. You're, a, you're a coffee fanatic, and you wanna buy new coffee beans, and you're in a, in a store which is selling coffee beans there's two stores you go in the first store and you ask the guy hey listen i have this i have this machine of coffee which coffee beans do you recommend and then he's like i recommend this one this one is nice you know you can get this one too if you want heavier coffee but i recommend this one and then you go to the next store and that guy tells you listen to me this one is freshly brewed a week ago this one is going to be a little bit more expensive it's going to be like around 20 percent more expensive 
but it's gonna give you double the taste. And if you prepare it correctly, you know, if you if you extract it correctly, if you do it with this, if you do it this way and then this way, you're gonna get a lot of cream out of it as well, which tastes very well. This one, however, if you like sour coffee, you know, like an espresso, I recommend you to take this one. And then if you if you like this one, you take this one. However, if you if you just want cheap coffee, I actually don't recommend you to get the cheapest. I recommend you to get the second cheapest because we have a lot of people that buy the cheapest one that really don't like it. But then this one is just a little bit more expensive, but it's it tastes very it tastes good. Now you tell me, which store would you come back to? Isn't it obvious you would come back to the second store? Like when I for example, when I go buy alcohol as well, like there's there's different people in the stores here you know some people will just tell me get this or get this because sometimes i walk in i just tell them recommend me something and then there's a, there's this one dude that just tells me about everything and i love it like i love it i love it when people do that and i'm pretty so that's also my philosophy with my youtube channel you know some people may call me crazy that some of my videos like will take a lot of time <laughs> but that's just my way that's just how i think uh, is the best way to do things because you're doing good to the world and I think you're doing good to you you're not making you know you're making less money in the short term I would say as well but then I would assume in the longer term it's always better it's it's I don't know it's I just always think it's better to to have better quality instead of well you need quantity too don't get me wrong like if I upload one video per week with the absolute best quality it's gonna be horrible because I'm not gonna make enough revenue you know, of course, if there's more viewers, you can do something like that. But but for a game like Wild Drift, I need quantity. Like, I need to upload almost daily. Um, and it, it is going to cost quality of the videos. But I am still doing my best to make it as best as possible. That is also why I actually hired pro players to also send me games. You know, because I wasn't playing as much as before. Because I actually used to play like 10 hours a day. And from those 10 hours, I would get one video per day back then. If you guys didn't know, by the way. Um, but now I'm only playing like four hours a day, I would say, on average. So it doesn't fill the quality gap that I need. You know, I'm not getting enough videos that, that fill the gap. And sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you guys, sometimes I have uploaded videos that haven't been to my, you know, up, up to my quality standards. And I, I regret them. Like, I always regret when I do that. Like, I still remember uploading the Caitlyn, the recent Caitlyn video. I'm still not happy with that. I have been contemplating to delete it, but I was like, okay, it's fine, it's okay, it's just one video, you know, that, that, that just doesn't uphold the quality standards that I prefer. So that's why I actually decided, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna spend to get better videos, you know, by spending to pro players and giving you guys a different perspective and a different viewing experience. So yeah, didn't say anything about Vayne, I know a lot of people hate Vayne, so maybe... You know, I talked about something else. Maybe that, that can be nice. I'm not sure why the Vex took the blue, but oh my god. What am I doing? I mean, what the hell was that? Look at... I, I'm focusing Alistar because I know I can kill the Alistar. Alistar is overextending a lot because he thinks he's unkillable, but he forgot that he's against the Vayne. Oof, the Urgot is also a problem. Actually, we're losing. Wait, we're, we're, we're losing. We're definitely losing right now. I do have a Guardian Angel, but that face check was unbelievably stupid of me, by the way. That was really dumb. Yeah, the Kha'Zix is 15 on 1. I remember that. Now he is a problem. However, I'm happy. I'm lucky that I have a Guardian Angel. So he's not going to one-shot me. If I didn't have a Guardian Angel, he would have genuinely one-shot me. However, the item that I'm building last, and this is an item that I've never built before on Bane, is Iceborne Gauntlet, believe it or not. And if you think it's trolling, I would say you're wrong. I stunned him, I stunned him, I stunned him, he's in the wall. There we go! Because in this particular game, Iceborne Gauntlet is insane. Trin um, um, Sheen items are pretty good on Vayne, as I told you already. And Iceborne Gauntlet perfectly fits this game, because it gives me the slow, and it gives me a lot of armor. Uh, a lot of armor, so it's very, very nice to get in this game, very nice. I could have also gone for Frozen Heart, but Iceborne Gauntlet just gives me a little bit more damage. That's why I chose to go for Iceborne Gauntlet this game. It makes a lot of sense, this game. Like, really a lot. So that's another lesson that I want to teach you about Wild Rift. You shouldn't always just follow the standard builds. Like, if you're in a game, you need to decide for yourself, hey, what do I need? Maybe you need an item that's not in a standard build. Like this particular game. Who, who on earth would tell you to build Iceborne Gauntlet on Vayne? I wouldn't even tell you to do that. But this game, it's really good. Right? Every game is different. You know, maybe, maybe, let me give you another situation. 
Maybe you are in a game against heavy AP and you have a Soraka in your team. What are you going to build then? Spirit Visage. Even if you're playing Jinx, even if you're playing whatever, it, you build Spirit Visage. Because it gives you magic resist and increased healing. So you're going to get a lot of increased healing from the Soraka. And you have Lifesteal as well, which is also going to be increased. You know what I mean? You have to think like this. Like, let's say you're playing support. You're playing Nautilus or, or, or Thresh or something. And you're against a Vayne. And uh, you need armor. Dawn Shroud. You know, that item is... What am I doing, by the way? Dawn Shroud. It will reveal the Vayne. It's like, like you, you have to think. Like, you shouldn't just build the standard build. You have to actually think and decide properly what you want to build. We finally killed the Kha'Zix, by the way. This should be a Baron. So like I don't I, I am I know I'm giving you guys a build to follow and I you know it's it's good to follow a build if you're a beginner but like if you um if you truly want to get good at this game you basically follow builds but you also change them a little bit towards situational builds just a little bit like some games you're gonna need something other games you're gonna need another thing I want to dodge his tornado he flashed to me but of course I dodged it he has a stupid wall but it's fine I can kill him easily yep there we go. Just make sure you dodge the wind wall and you're gonna be fine basically against the Yasuo. Stasis? Yeah, makes sense because if, if they catch me, I can stasis. I have enough tenacity already, so I decided that I didn't need a QSS this game. Because if Ash ults me, I'm probably not instantly gonna die, you know? So after that, I can stasis. Like, if I need to. So it's good. So like, our support right now, the Leona has Dawn Shroud, which is very good against this Kha'Zix because it's gonna make him visible. So she, he, he, she went for a very good item. Like, it's this, this, these types of things really make a difference. They really, really make a difference. I have one, basically won or lost games because people built wrong items or right items. Like, definitely, 100%. Even if the enemy was better, you know, if you build really good items against them, you can still win the game. You just have to build the right items, the right situational items. Like, a really good player that builds the wrong items is gonna struggle as well. Ooh, it should be that, come on. Ah... He was one shot, but he jumped away. I'm not afraid of this Urgot at all. I mean, look. I can stasis. I can stasis. He ulted me, so I stasis, stasis in case that wouldn't kill him, so he wouldn't be able to pull me in. I just stasis. Oof. I can ult here, so he won't be able to catch me. Ooh, but he used this. I'm healing on the minion here, and now I should ult and go on them. It seems like Kaisa is actually able to take care of them now. But let's just kill this Alistar as well. He used this ultimate, but of course it doesn't matter because I'm playing Vayne. And we won the game. So I abused the enemies really hard with top lane Vayne in this game. And I had a lot of fun, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Even though playing top lane Vayne is a disgusting foul act. But I do it anyways. Let's take a look at how much damage, everyone, uh, how much damage I did and everything like that. Victory. <clears throat> I'm still on the laptop, by the way, so I apologize for bad quality, but it is what it is. Let's take a look. Oh, I only had 24 LP here. Yeah, I was the MVP, of course. I did 60,000 damage, which is quite a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next Valdrift video. Bye-bye.